Hi there, I am Erman from Analyzeify team. In this video, we will set up Google Analytics for e-commerce tracking using Google Tag Manager for your Shopify store. We will jump into that right away. However, this is the sixth video of our Google Tag Manager data analytics course for Shopify stores. To achieve this result, you need to go back to previous videos and insert GTM into your Shopify store and also insert data layers into your checkout page. If you haven't done those, please start from there first. Hello again. In this video, we are going to create Google Analytics 4 purchase event using Google Tag Manager and the Google data layers we have recently created for our Shopify store. Let's get started. Just a quick recap and a reminder about what we have done so far. We have created a GA4 global tag and universal analytics global tag in our first lesson. And then we had created some triggers, URL based triggers and the custom event triggers again in the second lesson. If you haven't watched those, I would strongly recommend you to start from there first. More importantly, lastly, we had created some custom variables and the custom variables were including our data layer total value and data layer transaction ID. To achieve this result, we needed to add a special code into our Shopify checkout page so that data layer will work in the Shopify checkout page. So if you haven't done that, please jump back to the previous video and do that first, otherwise it won't work. Just to make sure that you understand what we are talking about, we are talking about this specific data layer code. This data layer code is doing the magic, taking the purchase details, sending into your data layer, and then Google Tag Manager is able to read through the data layer and send to wherever we want. In the previous video, we had done a Google Ads conversion purchase using this data. Now it's time to do the same for GA4 purchase event so that the e-commerce tracking will work in our GA4 environment. Let's get started. I need the measurement ID, GA4 measurement ID. To reach that, I'll just simply go to analytics, find the related GA4 account that I want to set up. Make sure that you are checking the GA4 account, not the UA account. If you don't have a GA4 account yet, jump back to the first video and create one. Once you are sure that you are in the GA4, click Admin and then Data Streams and then click your Data Stream. Copy the measurement ID, go back to Google Tag Manager. In the Tags section, click New. Let's call it GA4 Purchase Tracking and make sure to choose Google Analytics GA4 event and we have the GA4 global tag here which we had set it earlier. The event name should be purchase. However, this is not enough for GA4 to count your purchase event. You also need to set some event parameters such as the order value and transaction ID and currency. This is the documentation of GA4. We don't need everything here, but I just wanted to show you as a reference that how these things work. As you can see here, there is the field called transaction ID. I copy that transaction ID at, as a first parameter name. You might remember how to choose this value from the previous video. Click plus and then choose the data layer variable which we created in the previous step. And then we also need to have the value, the transaction value, the total transaction value. So the value is simply its written value, but I'll just copy paste. And the same here, I can click plus or I can start typing these brackets that it will suggest me. Then the total value is here. We can do the same with the currency, just like we did before, as we don't have dynamic currency. We can just write EUR for Euro. And in your case, it could be USD or AUD or whatever currency you are using. This is actually more than enough for the GA4 e-commerce tracking to work. But as you can see here, 
there are many other variables that you can actually send. So let's check back our code. As you can see here, there is a text price. We can also send the text. But for that, we need to create a new data layer variable called text. Because we have it here in the data layer code, but we don't have it in GTM yet. So I'll just copy this text, go back to GTM, save this for now, I'll come back, go to variables, click new. Again, let's follow the same methodology with the naming, data layer variable text, and then data layer variable name text. Let's see what else we have here. We have shipping price. Go back to Google Tag Manager. Choose data layer variable shipping. And again data layer variable name shipping. Let's see what else do we have. We have the currency, tax, transaction ID, we use it, payment type. I'm not sure if we have the payment type here. No, we don't have. So we can skip that. As you can see, we can actually send the product details as well. The product ID, product name, the price and everything. However, it requires a much more complex setup as there can be more than one product. So we couldn't cover that in this course. If you want to use all this complex setup and everything within your Google Analytics for e-commerce reports, you can consider purchasing our app Analyzify from Shopify App Store. That will do all of this. However, you definitely don't need this for your e-commerce reports to be working. It will be still good if you only track the transaction ID, value and everything because you will be able to do the conversion tracking. That is the most important thing. So. Now, as I have created two more data layer variables for shipping and uh, tags, I will go back to the GA for purchase tracking tag, click, and I will add these two parameters as well. Remember, the data layer variable name might be different than the parameter name. For the parameter name, we need to get the reference from the Google Tag Manager documentation. It is the same actually, tags and shipping, I just want to clarify. Again, I will put brackets, it will suggest me, okay, I choose the wrong one, text should be below, shipping, we have it here. Okay, it seems like we are set, GA4 Global Tech, purchase event, and all the event details are in here. And we had also choose the trigger, trigger is the custom purchase event which we had created in the previous video. So I'll just save it now, submit the changes that I had done. Close the tabs that I had opened earlier. Come back to uh, GTM. GTM suggests me to add the conversion linker because we added the Google Ads tag. So if you are using Google Ads, make sure to add conversion linker as well. I'll just do it now. It will help to link the conversions between the different browsers. Okay, now I click the preview mode again. Your store name, start. Now we expect to make a test purchase and then see the test purchase tracking in the GA4. Once again, adding this bank payment detail helps a lot with the test purchases so that you don't need to enter credit card or test credit card every time you make a test purchase. So we usually add this for the testing purposes, then we remove it once we are done. So again, I will click complete order and I will expect to see the purchase events here complete order, go back to tag assistant. It is lost connection because as I mentioned before, it is not tracking in the checkout pages, but only checkout completed pages. Okay, perfect. So we have the custom event analyze if I purchase here. We have the GA4 global tag and then UA purchase event and then GA4 purchase tracking event. This is amazing. And now I will click analyze if I purchase first and then GA4 purchase tracking just to see if the values came correctly. It seems that they came correctly. The shipping and tax value did not come because in my test order, I didn't have a shipping and tax uh, input, but the proof that it's not undefined, it is zero. So the data is coming perfectly. So now I'll go to GA4, click real time and see here, oh my God, that's here, purchasers. 
So GA4 shows us as a purchaser so that we have a new purchase event. It is just us making this test. Now I'll go to engagement, events. I should remind you though, sometimes these live events might not come immediately. So make sure to wait for a few minutes before you see it. It's happening now. As we just created the event, we won't see it here, but we already saw it in the real time report as a purchase event. And tax, transaction ID, value, everything is here. So it worked. Okay, now we will do one quick recap, step by step, if we were to review what we had done. Firstly, in the previous video, we went to settings and then checkout and pasted this data layer variable script into our Shopify store. In the very first video, we had added the Google Tag Manager container here. So, what this data layer script does is sending this event, this purchase details, and then the Google Tag Manager is able to read it. As a next step, we went, we created a custom trigger with this custom purchase event and we named it Analyzify Purchase because that was the event name and it is custom purchase event. If we didn't do this, we wouldn't have seen the event here. As the next step, we had created four data layer variables for transaction ID, total value, tax and shipping. All these data layer variables will help us to send the relevant data into GA4 as well as the other data sources. Last but not least, we have created our GA4 purchase tracking and edit the parameters here. And everything is working now. Thank you for watching and see you in the next videos.